In this video I would like to show you the basics of um, tessellations. Uh, tessellation is important to develop uh, nice grid structures and it's also important for um, subdivision in terms of building uh, nice geometries for example for uh, surface paneling and similar things in design and architecture. There are many ways in 3D Studio Max to uh, generate uh, tessellations. I just want to show you um, a few of them which I think are quite um, quite practical and uh, handy and we just go through these principles and I will explain the difference and what you could uh, probably do with this. The first tessellation we work with is um, a tessellation based on edit poly and uh, done with our graphite modeling tools. So I'll just start with a really simple box and I will add the modifier edit poly on top of it. And uh, when I did this I can just go into my graphite modeling tools which is now set up here on the right side because uh, I use my um, default at uh, enhanced menus 2014 which I think is really nice and uh, I just choose modeling and then subdivision and here I have my tessellate and uh, a little polar menu and with this polar menu I immediately get into my tessellate settings. Okay we just see what it does in perspective I go into subdivision I can also change the design of my uh, ribbon uh, and uh, choose it like this so you can um, have a better overview of your graphite modeling tools. Again I go into tessellate and then tessellate uh, settings and here you have this little menu which you can uh, pull around. It depends on which uh, viewport is switched on. I'll just change the viewport and it's just uh, jumping from one uh, to, to the other and I have a different kind of settings I can uh, I can make, I can um, d uh, differentiate or uh, choose between a tessellation by edges and a tessellation by polygon and you can already see the difference this uh, causes triangles and the other one um, causes four-sided polygons. When I press this button plus then you can see that I can increase uh, the iterations and um, I go some steps uh, back and uh, when I combine them and uh, for example combine my edge method with polygon method then you can see what's happening and just uh, causes different kind of patterns so you just have to be aware of what you can uh, combine and there's always uh, already a lot of potential just in terms of tessellation building edge uh, means uh, four-sided uh, four polygons or just uh, based on this uh, polygon level and then you have three-sided uh, polygons in your geometry. Okay, I delete this edit poly, I will add a new edit poly on it and I will just want to have a really simple tessellation and this tessellation is based on my poly method and I was just want to see what kind of impact it has on different kind of geometries. I will copy this um, um, modifier edit poly, right mouse click uh, copy and I will just attach it to this, uh, to the next polygon, uh, to the next object uh, which I already prepared. It's the same box uh, but with uh, two uh, segments in length, width and height dimension. So I go right mouse click on my box and I go into uh, paste. We can see it already has a different uh, kind of uh, kind of look but it's still based on uh, on, a, on a structure uh, of four-sided polygons. Okay I will do the same thing with my geosphere. I go into paste. And we can see uh, what kind of impact this has on the geometry. And if I delete it and I go again into um, edit poly and then my tessellation, we want to see what to look at what it looks like if I choose edge and if I choose uh, tessellate by polygon and if you do it by edge, y edge, then you can see it causes four sided polygons and uh, if you do it by polygon, then there are three sided polygons. So that's also a way of how to get um, four-sided polygons out of this geosphere with three-sided uh, polygons beforehand. We just see what happens if I increase the amount of segments. 
and I go again into uh, my um, edit poly and you can still see that it causes four-sided polygons. Okay, let's delete this again and um, go again into one segment and I will copy my uh, modifier again onto my uh, geosphere and we want to look at the next uh, next option. The next option is my uh, tessellate modifier. This is pretty much um, the same. It's quite similar to what I can get with my edit poly tessellate. There's one advantage of this tessellate modifier because you can always change this in my command panel. Okay, let's choose uh, the box, go into uh, my modifier menu and we choose our modifier tessellate and uh, here you can see, let's have a look, that you have different kind of options. When I choose uh, with upper hand on uh, the setting polygons then it already looks uh, the same like my edit poly and here you can also uh, change between uh, edge and uh, face center and if I go to faces then it uh, looks uh, different than what I can do with my edit poly and uh, tessellate so you have a little bit more options. Uh, this is also an option we can't uh, get with my edit poly uh, tessellate and you uh, it's important to keep to put the tensions to zero. I did this beforehand. I can extend the iterations on all uh, levels and so this is a way and uh, the same with my other objects uh, and also with my uh, uh, geosphere if I now go to tessellate then I can uh, change first I go again into tension zero we don't want to uh, deform my uh, object and here I can choose between edge and uh, face centers and that's again similar to what we have in my uh, uh, edit poly tessellate and uh, you have these different kind of uh, settings uh, where you can uh, change the topology. The quantifier modifier um, produces uh, four-sided edges. If you see this uh, box, obviously you can't uh, see so much because it's four-sided. Anyhow, if I go into my um, quantify, uh, quantify mesh, you can see what it does. The higher the value uh, the bigger my objects go. There's one thing you really have to be care of these sliders if you just pull it down and it goes to zero then your computer will crash because it's calculating and calculating so I always would put uh, a number inside and uh, don't uh, just uh, pull this thing down. So it doesn't do much here but if I choose my uh, geosphere again and I zoom into this uh, and I attach my, uh, apply my quantify uh, modifier, you can see what it does. It tries to produce um, four-sided uh, polygons also when there is an object underneath a geometry with uh, three-sided polygons um, as much as uh, possible and this is probably a really handy tool uh, to just change the to uh, topology from four-sided, from three-sided to four-sided. One thing is probably good to know, it's uh, important that you uh, don't have an edit poly underneath. If I go to edit poly and I have my show end result toggle on, then you can see that there are still triangles, but if I just have one um, edit mesh on top, I just uh, go to edit mesh and I go again and show end with a toggle on then you can see that it just produces these uh, four-sided um, four polygons. The last modifier I would like to show you is pretty much the same like uh, the quantify modifier and just the other way around. It just produces uh, three-sided uh, polygons and uh, we uh, look at this um, Look at this cube again. If I go into uh, subdivide, we can see that it produces uh, uh, triangles and three-sided um, polygons. I just uh, pull this slider down. Also be aware of uh, if you come too close to zero, then it takes a lot of uh, calculation time and you uh, can see that it causes uh, uh, three-sided polygons and if I go and choose my geosphere 
and also uh, choose uh, subdivide then I also can extend the amount of uh, triangles in my geometry. One thing is important and probably really handy if you use a tessellate modifier or edit poly you don't have to change to the whole topology. I just delete my subdivide again and in my edit poly I just choose some of my um, some of my polygons, just the lower part and uh, then I add uh, the modifier tessellate and the modifier tessellate relates to uh, the selection underneath in my edit poly actually. So you can see if I select some others then you can see that it's just changing and so the selection of my edit poly underneath causes the tessellation of this modifier on top. So what I can do, I can just build a box and uh, give this box some uh, segments in my width direction. Uh, I just extend my viewport a little bit and then I can go into um, edit poly and um, then I can choose uh, polygons. I choose my window crossings so, uh, crossings so I can select with my uh, string keyboard uh, these, these polygons and I just on top add my uh, uh, tessellation modifier and you can see uh, the tension I don't want apart from that it's probably nice to distort a little bit uh, looks uh, looks interesting but I don't actually don't want this so I just add uh, uh, zero here so without any extension and I go here by polygons and uh, just uh, increase iterations and then I rename my um, edit poly selection and just say here sorry right mouse click I uh, will name it and say edit poly edit poly a uh, quad and uh, just to uh, recognize it better when I when I uh, continue working on my geometry uh, what happened beforehand is probably quite interesting to uh, explain because when you click on my uh, um, top level of this um, uh, modifier then uh, uh, my selection is gone so it's really important that you uh, leave your uh, that you uh, keep uh, keep this sub hierarchy uh, switched on this polygon and if you want to rename it right mouse click on um, on my edit polygon and don't click on it because then you just lose your uh, selection Okay, with this in my mind, I just go again into uh, Edit Poly. I put this one on top, obviously, because uh, I want to uh, choose the other guys. And I go again into my uh, top view and uh, um, choose my um, polygons uh, next to these. This one, st uh, string keyboard, key and just holding. And uh, again, we go into selection we could also use the graphite modeling tools but I just want to use my uh, tessellate uh, modifier and uh, we just choose something which is more like uh, a structure like this I adjust it a little bit inst instead of edge I go into face center and then we can see that it already fits quite well to my geometry and here again um, I rename it and say edit poly edit poly angles to have a better idea of which edit poly is uh, for which kind of selection uh, responsible. I can also call it selection which also may would make sense. Uh, so far if I look at this uh, geometry it's uh, in my wireframe I can sh just see this kind of uh, shape but if I just look at this shaded it's just a really really simple box. We want to change this at the next steps and make it a little bit more interesting. I go again into edit poly enter my uh, top view and um, uh, zoom extend that, that I can see it properly again into my wireframe and we would like to change um, that this is an open structure and for this I just go into uh, insert and uh, I can just uh, go by polygon and can open this a little bit 
and uh, next step would be uh, would make sense just to add another modifier on it uh, the modifier delete mesh and so uh, these uh, inside meshes are deleted and I will add another modifier in this terms my edit modifier and have these also these structures a little bit more interesting I go into polygons I select this these ones the next row and these rows and um, in this term I just go into um, insert again uh, by polygon I make a small insert like this and on top I also go into extrude and here I have a little bit of a trick I go into animate and this means I can also change it afterwards I go to extrude and just also again by polygon extrude these cubes a little bit okay and if we just look at this uh, result in my uh, shaded mode it already looks like an like the basic of an interesting building structure really really simple but you can see already see that you can do a lot uh, with uh, tessellations and uh, different kind of uh, topologies of tessellations